Where would we be today without photography? Think about how many photos are taken in the world in just one day. Instagram, a popular photo sharing website, states it gets over 60 million photos posted per day. That's over 42,000 posted per minute. And that's just of the ones people want to share using this website. With the explosion of the selfie, a photograph taken by oneself, typically with a smartphone or webcam and uploaded to a social media website, it is estimated close to 1 trillion photos will be taken in this year alone. With photographs being such a common occurrence in today's society, does anyone know who invented photography? Who do we get to thank for the ability to take a selfie? The invention of photography is accredited to, to Louis Daguerre. However, like many inventions, there are many people who contributed to the actual invention of photography. It began in ancient times with the discovery of the camera obscura used to create true-to-life images on the walls of dark rooms. In as early as the 10th century, lenses were added to help focus the light. The camera obscura, similar to what we would call a pinhole camera, was a closed box with a tiny hole at one end. And because of optical laws, the light coming through the hole was transformed and creates an upside down mirrored image on the opposite surface. People were then able to trace the image and create beautiful paintings and drawings. It has been stated that many Renaissance artists used a camera obscura to create more realistic pictures, but refused to admit it for fear of being called cheaters. The problem with the camera obscura was there was no process to create a permanent image from the light. It would take many centuries and different people to perfect that process. The true birth of photography happened in the 1800s. It began with Thomas Wedgwood, who was able to obtain images, or to speak more correctly, shadows, by placing opaque objects on leather or paper treated with silver nitrate. However, the images would deteriorate under light stronger than a candle because there was no way of fixing them or making them permanent. Joseph Nisafor Niepce continued to work on finding a process to make light images permanent. He began to use the camera obscura with light sensitive paper. In 1825, he was able to create the first photo picture from a window in France. The photo had to be exposed to light for eight hours, making the sun appear to shine on both sides of the building. Needless to say, his photos were more of a technical innovation than an artistic one. Around 1829, Nieps joined forces with Degore and began to compare notes. However, Nieps died in 1833 before they could come up with a practical solution or process. Daguerre continued to improve upon the process. In 1839, he was able to create a remarkably detailed, one-of-a-kind photographic image on a highly polished silver-plated sheet of copper, which was sensitized with iodine vapors and exposed in a large box camera. He developed the image using his accidental discovery of vaporized mercury and then finally stabilized the image or fixed it with salt water. Daguerre's process of creating des cryotypes was admired by both the scientific and art community for the new possibilities these images opened up. He was able to create the first photo of a person because the man stood to get his shoe shine for the full 10 minutes required to develop the photo. During the same time, Henry Fox Talbot was also working on the process of photography in England. He used paper soaked in silver chloride and fixed with a salt solution. This image, or paper negative, was then pressed onto a sheet of paper to create a positive image. His process, called calotype, could produce multiple images. He worked with the astronomer Sir John Herschel. 
Herschel was the one who actually coined the term photography. The word was derived from the Greek word phos, meaning light, and grapho, meaning to write. Degliotype became the more popular process because it was bought by the French government and put in the public domain, compared to the calotype, which was a copyright protected process. Copyright versus public continues to be an issue today. Photography continued to remain mainly used by scientists and artists. It took decades of refinement and improvement in order for photography to be brought to the general public. George Eastman, the founder of the Eastman Kodak Company, is heralded as the father of popular photography. In 1888, he created the first Kodak camera. With 100 exposures, the user sent the whole camera back to Kodak to be processed and developed. He then furthered photography with the invention of the roll of film. It wasn't until the 1900s when the first brownie and an expensive and simple to use handheld box camera made photography available to everyone. Kodak continued to advance photography by introducing color film in 1936. An engineer at Kodak creates the first digital camera in 1975, but it was about the size of a toaster. By 1991, they had the first digital camera for professional use, but it was really expensive. Within five years, there would be many other companies with more affordable models. Kodak, the leader in photography, actually stopped producing film cameras in 2004. The 21st century has brought the use of digital cameras to the masses on a whole new level. It started in 2000 when Samsung put the first digital camera in a cell phone. This has allowed for more people to have access to a camera on a daily basis. This is why, as a society, we will be able to create one trillion photos in only one year. Due to society's overexposure to photographs, our culture has adapted in many ways. The first area in society to embrace the new technology is art. In fact, Louis Daguerre himself was an artist before his invention of photography. Like with all new technologies, there was and still is to some degree conflict between those artists who felt the traditional forms to be more true versus the innovators who embraced the new medium of photography and all its potential. The second area quick to adapt to the use of photography was science. Scientists used photographs right from the very beginning to help illustrate their scientific discoveries. Photographic proof was seen as one of the only ways to accurately prove one's findings. One could no longer just write about their findings, they had to have photographic proof. However, this advancement came with a flip side. Trust. Can you trust in those images to accurately reflect reality or to act like the human eye? Early photographers faced challenges regarding standardization in printing and reproduction in order to create reliable images. This challenge had to be overcome for photographs to be seen as reliable enough to act as evidence. This challenge of trust can be seen today as well with the advances in software like Photoshop one now begins to wonder if the photos they are viewing are real or not. It has been said that we are becoming a visual culture and with a trillion new photos being added each year, one would be hard pressed to disagree. It has also been said that with this bombardment of pictures, we are entering a time where images will overtake the written word. Writing and all its forms has had to add and incorporate photographs from the beginning. Nature and National Geographic magazines included photographs early on, but they were used to help illustrate the written words they accompanied. This is still true today. Textbooks require visuals in order to better explain the written information they are presenting to students. 
Education is yet another area which is embracing the use of photographs to help better people's understanding. Today, there are many ways to use photographs to help students learn. One great example of a subject where the use of photographs has helped bring the subject to life is social studies. In the past, History was presented as a dry, lifeless narrative which would prevent the student from truly understanding and engaging in the information. Now, with the help of iconic historical images like these, one's students are better able to engage and learn in a more dramatic way. It has been said that a picture is worth a thousand words. However, sometimes a picture can help you write a thousand words.